guys welcome to medbits made simple in this video we're going to see about lung volumes and capacities so basically there are four lung volumes and four lung capacities which you got to know first let's get started by looking at the lung volumes the first one which you're going to see is tidal volume Tidal volume is the volume of air inspired or expired during each normal breathing. It's about 500 ml. So what's tidal volume? Try doing a normal respiration. Try to inspire and expire. The volume of air which you inspire during a normal inspiration as well as the volume of air which you expire during normal expiration is about 500 ml and that's the tidal volume the next one is inspiratory reserve volume inspiratory reserve volume is the extra volume of air which can be inspired above the normal tidal volume it is done by forceful inspiration. Inspiratory reserve volume is about 3000 ml. So what is inspiratory reserve volume? So previously we saw the tidal volume which is the volume of air which enters inside during normal inspiration as well as the volume of air which exits during normal expiration. So when you try to do a forceful inspiration some amount of air enters the lungs above the tidal volume so the, above the 500 ml some amount of air enters the lungs that volume of air is known as the inspiratory reserve volume and that's 3000 ml the next one is expiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume is the extra volume of air that can be expired above normal tidal expiration it is done by forceful expiration it is about 1100 ml so what is expiratory reserve volume at the end of the normal tidal expiration even some amount of air can be expired by you by giving an extra effort and that can be done by a forceful expiration so at the end of a normal tidal expiration that is after you expire the normal 500 ml if you try to do a forceful expiration you can expire about 1100 ml and that's the expiratory reserve volume and the next volume is the residual volume residual volume is the volume of air that remains in the lungs after most forceful expiration it's about 1200 ml so what is residual volume even after a forceful expiration some amount of air remains in the lungs that is known as residual volume and it is about 1200 ml so now we're done with the volumes let's get into lung capacities first one is inspiratory capacity inspiratory capacity is the maximum amount of air a person can breathe in beginning from normal tidal expiration Inspiratory capacity is tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. It's about 3500 ml. So, this includes all the inspiration which can be done by a person. So, at the end of a normal expiration, if a person starts to breathe in forcefully, he'll breathe in the normal, ti normal tidal inspiration as well as the extra inspiratory thing which he can breathe in. So, that's what is mentioned here. Inspiratory capacity is tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume so it makes around 3500 ml hope you got this right the next one is functional residual capacity 
Functional residual capacity is the amount of air in lungs at the end of normal expiration. Functional residual capacity is expirated reserve volume plus residual volume is about 2300 ml. So what is functional residual capacity? At the end of normal expiration, some amount of air stays in the lungs. And what is this air? When we saw about expiratory reserve volume, we told that at the end of normal expiration, with some maximum effort, with some forceful effort, you can still expire some amount of air. That is expiratory reserve volume, right? So, and some amount of air which stays in the lung even after maximal effort, that is residual volume. So at the end of normal expiration, whatever air remains in the lungs is functional residual capacity. So as you know, at the end of normal expiration, expiratory reserve volume as well as residual volume remains in the lungs. If you add these two together, you'll get 2300 ml and that makes the functional residual capacity. Next one is vital capacity. Vital capacity is the amount of air person can expel starting from maximal inspiration till maximal expiration vital capacity is inspiratory capacity plus expiratory reserve volume it makes around 4600 ml so what is vital capacity now try doing this try to inspire as much as possible Try to do a forceful inspiration and try to expire as much as possible by a forceful expiration. So the volume of air which is involved in this act is known as vital capacity. So here as mentioned, vital capacity is inspiratory capacity plus expiratory reserve volume. What is inspiratory capacity? I mentioned earlier that inspiratory capacity is the total inspiration which is done by a person which includes the tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume. So these will include the inspiration part which we done, which we have done. And what is expiratory reserve volume? Expiratory reserve volume is the extra volume of air which can be expired at the end of a normal expiration. So when you do this act, that is starting from a maximum inspiration, you blow out till a maximum expiration, the volume of air will be the volume of air which is involved is like inspiratory capacity plus the expiratory reserve volume that is the total amount of air inspired plus the total amount of air expired maximally this is the vital capacity and it makes up 4600 ml the final one is total lung capacity total lung capacity is the maximum volume to which the lungs can be expanded with the greatest possible effort. The total lung capacity is vital capacity plus residual volume and it makes up 5800 ml. So as said previously, what is vital capacity? Vital capacity is the maximum amount of air which can be expired maximally starting from a maximum inspiration. So, when you do this act, this involves all the air which is being involved in doing respiration, during respiration involving maximum effort. And as told you earlier, even some amount of air remains in the lungs, even after maximal effort, and that volume is residual volume. You include the maximum amount of air which is involved in maximal respiration, which is vital capacity, along with the volume which remains in the lungs even after maximal effort and that's residual volume when you combine these two together that is the vital capacity and the residual volume what you get is the total lung capacity and that is around 5800 ml so you got to remember that the total lung capacity is 5800 ml now spirometry spirometry is the device which is used to measure the lung functions in this picture you can see a basic spirometry device. Now, here you can see that there's a mouthpiece through which you can blow air. And this is connected to the container. The container has water in it 
and there's a floating drum in the water which has an oxygen chamber inside it and then there's a counter balancing weight which is attached which is which is attached to the floating drum you can see that there, there's a recording drum to which this this apparatus is connected as you blow air in and out the floating drum moves accordingly and then you get the spirometry recording on the recording drum this is how a spirometry is recorded and this picture is a summary of whatever we saw today here you can see that the tidal volume is marked in the center of the picture it's about 500 ml you can see the inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume, the residual volume inspiratory capacity, vital capacity, functional residual capacity and total lung capacity now what you're going to do is you've got to recollect the normal values of each of these things which we saw earlier and you're going to compare with this diagram and you're going to check if you can remember everything right or else you can read it right now and make it thorough now next topic is flow volume curves what are flow volume curves used for it can be used to study the flow rates during expiration the peak expiratory flow rate which is PEFR the forced vital capacity which is FVC now what is flow rates during expiration like the thing which is important regarding the flow rates during expiration is the flow rate is maximum during the beginning of expiration and the flow rate keeps on decreasing near the end of the expiration so as I said now the flow rate which is maximum at the beginning of expiration that flow rate is known as the peak expiratory flow rate which is marked as BEFR what is forced vital capacity is nothing but similar to the vital capacity which was told earlier what you do here is you're gonna do a forced maximal inspiration and you're gonna do a forced maximal expiration the volume of air which is involved here in this entire act is forced vital capacity now let's see how these flow volume curves are used this picture shows a flow volume curve actually in this picture you can see only the expiration part inspiration part is usually shown below the x-axis in this picture the inspiration part is not shown the expiration part is the most important part which needs to be understood clearly in the x-axis you can see the lung volumes marked in liters and y-axis you can see the expiratory air flow rate which is marked in liters per minute so in the center one which is marked here is a normal flow volume curve and you can see the peak expiratory flow rate marked there at the top and now we as told earlier the peak expiratory flow rate is attained in the beginning of the expiration the lung has about six volumes six liters of volume in the beginning of expiration and it keeps on decreasing as the volume decreases the flow rate also decreases this is a normal expiration pattern now let's consider obstructive lung diseases in obstructive lung diseases what happens is that there would be in most of the cases there will be difficulty in expiration rather than inspiration so what happens since there is difficulty in expiration the expiratory flow rate also decreases you can see that the peak expiratory flow rate in the airway obstruction case is very much low and the respiratory rate expiratory rate is or expiratory flow rate is also decreased so you can see that the lung volume is increased compared to the normal case in airway obstruction why is that that's because there's difficulty in only in expiration inspiration is normal so some amount of air keeps on accumulating inside the lungs which cannot be properly expired out so the volume of the lung naturally increases more than a normal person's lung and it can't be it cannot be expired fully out of the lung so that you can you can see that the volume which is remaining in the lung at the end of the expiration is about four liters in this case as compared to a normal person will have having a residual volume of about 1200 around that so this is the case in obstructive lung diseases now 
In the case of restrictive lung diseases, which is marked as constrictor lungs in this case, that both the flow rate of the lung decreases as well as the volume of the lung decreases as the lung is constricted. What happens is the peak expiratory flow rate is low, as you can see in this picture, as well as the volume of the lung at the beginning of the expiration is also low. Since the volume, since the lung cannot expand properly due to fibrosis or any condition which prevents the lungs from expanding properly. This is the case with restrictive lung diseases. Hope you got this right. There's something known as FEV1 by FVC ratio. Now what is FEV1 by FVC ratio? First, let's see about the individual terms. FEV1 stands for force expiratory volume in one second. What is that? FEV1 is the volume of air which is which is expired during a forceful expiration in the first second. Okay. And FVC stands for forced vital capacity, which I've told you earlier about. So what's this ratio to do with? This ratio will help you to find out obstructive lung diseases. So what happens is normally this ratio is about 0.8. In obstructive lung diseases, what happens is this ratio is less than 0.8. In restrictive lung diseases, the ratio remains unchanged and normal. We'll tell you how. In obstructive lung diseases, the ratio is less than 0.8. Why is that? That's because the forced expiratory volume in one second is reduced as, as seen in the previous graph as seen, in this, as seen in the previous flow volume curve the peak expiratory flow rate is decreased so the volume of air which is expired in one second is also decreased so as per the basic mathematic rule when the numerator decreases what happens is the ratio also decreases so it becomes less than 0.8 in restrictive lung diseases, what happens is that both the forced expiratory volume in one second, that is the FE1, FEV1, as well as the FVC decreases. The reasons have been explained earlier, that is the lung cannot expand properly. So the flow rate also decreases, the volume of the lung also decreases. So as per the basic mathematic rule, when the numerator as well as the denominator of a ratio decreases, the ratio usually remains unchanged. This is to do with the FEV1 and FEC ratio. Hope you got the concepts right. We recommend you to see this video once again and get the concepts clear. And you can use Ganong's textbook of physiology as well as guidance textbook of physiology which, which clearly explains these concepts. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel Medbits Made Simple by clicking here.